Welcome to another Maker Series tutorial video. Today, we'll be learning how to use the pottery wheels and the kiln to create art in the maker space. Let's head back to the dirty space and get started. The first thing you're gonna do is take your wire to cut a piece of clay off of the bigger piece of clay. We're going to take this and we're going to throw it against our palm to get the basic shape going. The next thing that you're gonna do is we're going to wedge the clay. Wedging the clay is essentially kneading the clay. So you're going to take the base of your palm and push it away from you in the fashion that you see me doing in the video. We're gonna repeat this until the clay becomes one solid mass. Once we've kneaded the clay, we're going to smash it against our palm to make a circular shape. We're going to repeat this until we get a satisfactory orb. These are the tools that you'll need to throw on the wheel. You'll need a sponge and two pointy objects and a cup of water. Now that the clay is ready, we're gonna prep our wheel. The first thing that we're gonna do is put our white trays on. There's two buttons that you'll need to snap into place on either side of the wheel. There are a few basic controls for the wheel. The yellow switch is the on button. Once you see that red light come on, you'll know that it's on and ready to go. You can either go forward or reverse. Now we're going to take our lump of clay and hit it down into the center. You can make sure that your clay is centered by using the metal lines on the wheel itself. To make the wheel spin, you can either use the handle or you can use the pedal. What we're going to do now is center the clay. We're gonna make sure that our hands are slick with water and we're going to use the center area of our palms to push towards the center of the wheel. We're going to do this until we don't feel that the clay is rising up against our hands. You're gonna make a cone in this shape. Next, what we're gonna do is take our sponge, get it wet with water, and use it to bring our clay upward. This is called coning up. We're gonna do this very slowly so that we do not pull a piece off the top. Now that we have our cone up, we're gonna cone down. So to do this, we're going to guide with one hand and use the sponge to push down. We're gonna make sure that our sponge is wet so that we don't create any friction against the clay. If your clay starts to heat up, you'll wanna add more water. What we're doing now is we're taking a sharp object and we are going to cut the little skirt of clay off that's not part of our centered mass. Now we're going to re-wet our hands and we're going to align our two pointer fingers in the center of the clay until they do not move. Then what we're going to do is begin pressing down and then pulling outward. So now we're gonna take one of our sharp objects and we're going to poke it down into the center of the clay after we've stopped the wheel. This will tell us how deep our bottom is. We wanna make sure that it is no thicker than a quarter of an inch. If it is thicker than a quarter of an inch, you'll need to turn your wheel back on and continuing adding pressure in the middle to make it a little bit thinner. We're gonna moisten our sponge and put it into the center of our piece to ensure that our clay is sufficiently moist. What we're gonna do with this sponge as well is we're going to pull the piece up. In order to pull up, what you're going to do is use the side of one of your index fingers on the outside and guide with your finger on the inside and you're going to shorten the distance between them and slowly move your hands up the piece. Now, we're going to take the sponge on the inside and pull the piece outward to make a bowl. We're gonna make sure that this process is done very slowly so that we have an even wall. One thing that you'll wanna make sure is that your piece stays sufficiently moist during this process. If you begin to feel any friction or heat generated, you should stop, re-moisten your hands, and continue. Now, we're gonna take one of our sharp tools and we're going to cut the excess clay around the foot of our bowl. We're gonna come in at a high angle and then lower it down to be level with the wheel. Then, you can take your sponge and smooth out the inside and outside to ensure you have an even finish. We're now going to wire off the wheel. We're gonna take our sponge loaded with water and distribute it evenly around our piece. We're gonna wrap the wire around our fingers so it's taut, and we're going to press it against the wheel and pull underneath our piece. It should separate and hydroplane on top of the wheel thanks to the water. We can then pick up our piece and place it on a small piece of plywood or cardboard. To clean the wheel, you'll wanna get the sponge wet with clean water and wipe off while the wheel is spinning. Make sure you get the edges. 
Now we're going to take the big sponge and make sure that the surface is completely clean and smooth. Remove your excess clay and your tools from your tray and bring them over to the sink area. Now you're gonna remove the white tray from your wheel and bring it over to the sink. Any excess clay can be disregarded in the scrap bucket. We will now take our white trays and spray them off in the sink. Make sure that you angle the trays away from you so that you do not get yourself wet. You're gonna set them on the drying rack and allow them to dry fully before putting them away. Your piece can be set on the metal racks and left to dry. Once your piece is bone dry, it can be fired in the kiln. But before you fire, you should always make sure to clean up your bottoms. This provides your piece with a more finished and professional look. This can be done using a sharp edge. That sharp edge can also be used to carve your initials into the bottom so that we know whose is whose. After setting your piece into the kiln, it can be closed up and the lab technician will start it for you. In the next video, we'll talk about glazing your piece. Thanks for joining us.